I tried to figure out how I could teach non-linearly. So uh, the format I used to take was simply giving instructions for, like I say, 90 minutes. And at the end of it, students would have whatever they had, you know, the exact same thing as all of their classmates. So I thought about teaching less, but more often. So I thought about making my teaching, or the specific parts of my teaching, into smaller elements. And I also thought about teaching without any particular genre or particular game format in mind. So abstracting concepts of learning into very short chunks. Focusing on game mechanics and attempting to give people confidence by allowing them to solve problems. Rather than saying, look, this is a problem, this is how you solve it. That doesn't really give anyone that much confidence. Unless they can kind of do something for themselves within a lesson, uh, they weren't really building confidence for themselves. And also, crucially, allowing experimentation and collaboration. So I didn't have a whole lot of time uh, in my classroom to deliver uh, the kind of stuff I wanted to get through. So I knew that I wanted to, students to get from point A to point B and by the end have something built. But I didn't actually have a way of them stopping to ask me a question or stopping to uh, change what we had made so they all had something unique. So that was a bit of a problem. So I came up with this new approach, which I called uh, modules and challenges. So I had several small pieces of information and then a challenge, which I would show them what I wanted them to achieve with the knowledge that they already knew how to achieve it based on the small modules of information. So for example, one module would be adding physics to an object. Okay? So not in context of, okay, this is a Tetris block or you know, this is a character or anything like that, just physics, and that's it. Second module might be detecting collisions. One object hits another, and you detect when that happens, and you can throw something into it. Example three might be using a joint to make a seesaw, so adding a hinge, getting a reaction. So they've done those sh short three pieces of information, and I knew that they knew how to achieve those particular game mechanics. Then the challenge I would set them is combining those three things in order to make something different. So taking those bits of information, completely abstract from any kind of game mechanic, suggesting a game mechanic to them and asking them to create it without giving them any instruction. I also got them to do that uh, in pairs so that they could actually you know, verbalize and talk about what they wanted to achieve, how they thought they should do it, and it gave me time to walk around the classroom and actually listen to them and see what pitfalls everyone was actually coming up with, which I found really interesting. So there are two implementations of this approach. Uh, the first one's Unity 3D Student, um, which I'll show you very briefly. So this is uh, my site. I don't know if anyone's seen this yet. Uh, I launched it a couple of months ago. And it basically uses that existing approach that I just described. So it has a series of modules. Uh, you're going to have to excuse the rather ropey CSS I'm currently rewriting. Um, but it basically follows that pattern. So you have several. Um, modules of information, and I've tried to keep them as abstract as possible. And you then combine those by going into challenges, and the challenge will suggest the particular uh, game mechanic, what it should have, and then we'll list all of the different modules of information uh, based on that. Our Wi Fi is a little bit slow at the moment. Okay, so within any particular challenge, for example, uh, this third one knock down three targets to win. Okay, so in that, it's video-based content. Um, so the modules are between two and seven minutes long, so keeping it short and keeping individual concepts separate. Um, and the challenges last about 30 seconds, or as long as it takes me to uh, describe what they need to do. So underneath that, I've got all of the required modules, and they can go and seek those out. So this is the third challenge. The first and second challenge may have already taught them several of these existing concepts. So as I said at the beginning, um, I'm really kind of looking at the real beginner stuff. You know, I'm trying to get people uh, into using Unity as a tool without thinking about, okay, well, Unity is definitely something that's going to be for me to design a particular kind of game. Uh, if you bear with me a minute, I'll get back to our presentation. There we go. Cool, so the other implementation of this strategy was a two-week production unit, and I wanted to briefly show you uh, how that went and just give you some of the kind of results that I managed to get out of it. So on week one, uh, on the Monday, we basically have 90 minute lessons. So on the Monday, uh, students had six of those modules. Uh, we set them some homework on Unity 3D Student. So I said, 
follow challenges one and two, you will get extra stuff to what we've actually achieved. And I made sure all of the content on that online learning resource matched exactly what we did in the classroom. So on Friday, um, students came in, showed me what they've managed to achieve, and I actually got to see that pretty much everyone had made a very similar mistake with a particular challenge. And I could then see what that uh, meant for the challenge and what that meant for the actual learning modules and go back and correct it or explain it in a slightly different way. So it's a good way of me getting some feedback. Um, and then the next week on Monday, over the weekend between these two weeks, I said, okay, we'll come up with a game idea. And I tried my best not to mention any particular game or something that they'd be familiar with. I really wanted them to think creatively and you know, to make sure that they weren't actually uh, doing something based on what I'd showed them. However, I did make one mistake, which was to show them uh, a very brief top-down shooter game. Uh, and as a result, that particular class came back with about five or so people on the Friday with a top-down shooter game. Okay? But the rest of them came up with something uh, really you know, quite interesting. So I just wanted to show you very briefly uh, a quick showreel of what they came up with. So these are very, very simple concepts, um, very, very simple uh, game ideas. But uh, I did want to kind of reiterate that these are people from a web design background, and they had about three days to kind of make the game. Uh, we don't have any sound, but that's cool. We don't need sound. Do we have sound? No? OK. I'm going to just unplug that. Not sure if that works. There's a the shooter. <laughs> yeah, I don't recommend anyone make Carmageddon, but... That was a nice tower defense game. That was cool. Color matching. This is probably the best one that we got. Kind of a, a spin on the doodle jump kind of concept. Um, this was a kind of kids' educational game. Some simple shooters, maze-based. Really nice kind of uh, thing where you fall down if you stepped on the wrong thing, Indiana Jones style. Some puzzlers, and this is another really nice concept. If you touch the sides, you'd get bigger, and you had to avoid enemies, which is quite a cool concept. So yeah, so quite, quite a wide, wide array of uh, different things that we got out of that. Um, so you know, we as a, you know, as a department, we're really, really pleased with, with what our, our students came up with. Um, and we made sure that on the Friday, we actually got them to take part in an art, art school style uh, quit session. So they would actually present their games rather than just handing them over to us. Um, so basically, everyone got a chance to see what everyone else was making. But up until that point, they didn't really have that much idea about what they should do. Uh, and we deliberately tried not to give them too much guidance on what we wanted them to achieve. Uh, and we then give them a kind of guidance grade on what they would make um, so that they could take that game further. If it was really bad, we'd say, yeah, it's not quite up to scratch. Um, but it was interesting because we didn't actually have an idea of what people were going to come out with until they showed us. Uh, yeah, we've been through this. Cool. And that's the video. OK, so uh, I'm going to hand over to Dan and Casey in a sec. Um, but after we get into some kind of discussion, I did want to talk about a couple of concepts, which is programming comprehension. So programming is always a real problem. So people come to Unity and they think, well, this is fantastic. You know, that We've got this tool that you can just drag and drop things and make a game. It's amazing. And then they open up the script editor, and you know, their laptop breaks from all the tears that fall on it. Um, and also, ideas before solutions. So people coming up with something based on what they've learned, which is kind of the problem I had with, with teaching in my old format, which was just to say, OK, this is going to be a racing game. We're going to learn that. Because then what they did is said, well, OK, well, I know how to make a car driving around. So I'm going to make a car driving around, but in space. So the problem with that was they'd taken the technology. They'd taken what they already knew how to do and try to you know, crowbar an idea out of it. And that's not a great thing to do. So. I just wanted to put those kind of concepts up there, um, and then we'll talk about them later. But I'm going to hand over to these guys now. So thanks very much. Cool. Thanks,